Hi everyone. Um, as Jason said, my name is Shoshana Mall, um, and I was the Becker Fellow in Research this past summer. Um, I was my site was the University of Chicago Medical Center. Um, and just a little background on me: I'm a senior here at Cornell, and I'm a molecular biology and biochemistry major. So I worked in Dr. Richard Craig's lab. Richard Craig, as Jason mentioned, is a Cornell alum, and he works. Um, he's a neurologist who practices medicine, but also. Um, has his own research lab, and he does a lot of work on, on chronic migraines and multiple, also multiple sclerosis. Um, so through this, throughout the summer, I worked with pretty much three different lab members. Um, Dr. Richard Craig himself actually spent three to four hours a day often working with me individually. I was the only intern in the lab, so I had a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with him, which was incredible. Um, I also worked with Danuta Dekala very closely. She was pretty much my partner this summer um, as we did this lab together. And Lisa Wan was um, a great um, lab technician to have and answered a lot of questions as I went throughout the summer. Oh. All right, so a little bit of background. Um, Dr. Richard Craig's lab has shown that something called environmental enrichment, which is social, physical, and social activity, um, can release exosomes. And for the purpose of this um, talk, I will say exosomes are small vesicles that are released by a majority of the cells in um, our bodies and in rats' bodies. Um, and they've shown that these exosomes, if you take these exosomes from environmentally enriched animals and in nasally inject them into other um, animals, in this case rats, you see an increase in myelination within the brain. And the reason that we're inter interested in myelination in the brain is that it has to do with a lot of neurological disorders. Um, for this talk, I'm going to focus on multiple sclerosis. Uh, multiple sclerosis, MS, is a uh, very common um, disease now, and it affects people with a loss of coordination, trouble walking, and also immense amounts of pain. So it's a very interesting um, subject to be looking at. So what Dr. Craig's lab has really shown is that we have the possibility using this um, exosome model to increase myelination. And so there's a potential for it to be a neurotherapeutic for something like multiple sclerosis. Where I came in the lab is um, we already knew, they had really verified that exosomes produce this myelination effect, so that was very clear. But what we really don't know is whether these exosomes are able to actually enter the brain. So there's something called the blood-brain barrier, and most things um, can actually not enter your brain when they're nasally ingested, um, which is very beneficial for us as humans. Um, so the interest really for this project was can we verify that these are able to actually enter the brain, and if they are, where in the brain do these things end up? So my project was really kind of in two parts. The first part of my project was to determine a way to stain these exosomes. So these exosomes are about 100 to 130 nanometers. Just to give you a little um, sense of what 130 nanometers is, a single strand of hair is about 160,000 nanometers. So these are really, really small. Um, so I was trying to find a dye that we could use to um, stain these exosomes that would only stain the exosome and nothing else, so that we wouldn't be having a possibility of having false positives within the brain. So as I, w I was able to determine that M-Cling, which is a particular fluorescent dye, worked very well to stain exosomes. The second part of my project was actually quite different. It was seeing if a non-biological particle, and by a non-biological particle, I mean a plastic bead that's stuffed with fluorescent dye, can actually enter the brain when it's given nasally. And I was able to see that, yes, a 48 nanometer fluorescent bead can um, enter the brain after nasal administration, which was pretty exciting. So for me, the fellowship impact, number one, I would say, is that I had an incredible amount of professional lab techniques that I was able to learn that I had never really used before. Um, and also just general professional lab techniques as in creating reproducible um, research pr experiments and also figuring out ways to um, make these experiments easily um, usable for other labs. Um, I was also introduced to super resolution microscopy. As I mentioned, we were dealing with things that were in the either 48 to 130 nanometer range, so you really have to use something that can see something in that range. So I had a lot of um, experience working with different forms of microscopy, which was really interesting. Um, the overall goal of this project was to produce um, a publication called a research paper. Um, so a lot of the time, my time was spent practicing writing for this paper and also working on figures for the paper. So I was actively involved in this paper and actually continued to be. Um, involved. This paper we're hoping to send in in the end of December, um, and I will be proofreading that paper along with um, Dr. Craig coming up here shortly. The other part of this fellowship, it gave me the opportunity to be part of PSOMER, which stands for Pritzker School of Medicine Experience and Research. Um, and this is a program for students from all over the U.S. and actually outside of the country as well, and it's a pipeline program for students who are interested in medical school. <coughs> 
um so these are all of us were placed individually into different labs. generally, we were the only undergraduate or intern intern working in these labs. and we all completed a lab project throughout our eight weeks that we were in chicago another portion of the program was really to give us an idea of what it's like to be a medical student. so we were exposed and interacting with medical students. we were also exposed with md and md phd students. Um, and we had a lot of opportunities to hear about their daily life, to attend um, talks with them, and really see what it's like to, one, be an applicant for medical school, to be accepted in a medical school, to start that process, and then three, to be someone who was almost done with medical school and looking at their future career. So that was a really impactful for me. It gave me a really clear idea of what I'm looking at as I apply for medical schools this next spring, and also just the entire medical school application process. Lastly, I had the opportunity to do four medical, mock medical school interviews with various um, people who are on the admissions committee at Pritzker School of Medicine, which I think is probably one of the biggest things I took from this summer, is just having that experience um, makes me feel a lot more confident as I go into the next stage of actual medical school applications. Um, and lastly, this fellowship really gave me the opportunity to clarify what I want to do with my life, um, and it really, um, showed me that I do want to pursue a career and my, the next step for me is um, applying for MD PhD, uh, MD PhD program so um, it really made me clear that I wanted research to be part of my life which was really important. Lastly I got to spend the summer in Chicago which was pretty fun. Uh, I made some really great friends and we had we were strongly encouraged to take advantage of um, what a Chicago has to, has to offer so we were really encouraged to go to museums and just go to musical events um, and really see what's in the city, which was really fun. Lastly, I want to thank quite a few people. First of all, um, Elizabeth Becker, my donor. Um, second, Cornell Fellows, and also the, our pre-health program here, um, Dimensions, for those of you who are not familiar. Um, I really need to thank my faculty sponsor, Barbara Christie Pope, not only for helping me get this fellowship, but also for um, really sparking my interest in neurology in general. So she's, she's the reason I'm here. Um, I want to thank my sites uh, supervisor. He ha was incredibly involved with um, my summer and continues to be involved. Um, he will be helping me with medical school applications, so that's pretty important. Um, and then to think, thank the whole team um, who are part of the Pritzker School of Medicine Experience and Research Program. They have all been really important contacts for me and will continue to be so in the next few years. Um, and then the lab members that I worked with, Danuta and Lisa, who were there to answer my every question, which was a lot of questions. Tepper could probably second that. <laughs> um, and that's it. Thank you.